What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, lately I've been reading a lot of posts online, different things, and been seeing some things on Twitter and stuff as well. And uh, people just tweeting my account and stuff like that about, you know, which team would benefit the most from there not being any super teams in the NBA right now. Not any real legitimate like super teams, big threes anymore. Now the Nets are out the way and now the Lakers have just, you know, you know, made a bust of their season so far and just have not lived up to expectation. You can't look at them as a super team either. And then I came to the conclusion that the Clippers would benefit the most from this. And and I say that because the Clippers, if they're healthy, to me, they got the best duo in the NBA, if you ask me. Simply because, not because, you know, you, you can argue, you know, Kyrie and Katie. You could say you could say Clay and Steph, you know, whatever you want to say. But honestly, like to me, the best duo, the strongest duo in the NBA on both sides of the floor has got to be Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Both have the ability to drop 25 plus points a game. Um, Paul George has definitely been a top 10 player in the league, you know, before or if I don't know if you look at him that way, but he's definitely been in that top 10 player in the league mentions, you know, several years in his career. He's been in MVP votes before MVP conversations. Kawhi definitely has. Kawhi is definitely you know, the better player between the two. And he's won two championships, two finals MVPs, and he's probably arguably top two, top three player, top five player in the league when healthy, no doubt about it. So, I mean, when you look at those two players and what they bring, what they present to as a challenge to every other team, it's, you know, not only their scoring, but their defense. Their defense is good enough to stop, to neutralize a lot of things, causing turnovers. You know, two of the best perimeter defenders in the league, both two-way players. Kawhi is definitely the best two-way player to me, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, Paul George is not far behind. So, you know, when you look at that in its entirety and what these two players, players can do along with the team that they have to me the Clippers should be the team that benefits the most from the death of a big three the big three era because honestly even if the Nets were still together with James Harden and you know Katie and Kyrie uh, it's still a possibility that the Clippers would have been able to beat them in a seven game series just because of the defense they have and the more chemistry that they had as a team and as a unit what they showed last year in the playoffs and definitely going into this year into the playoffs if they're healthy you know so honestly this is the reason why i said before i think the clippers you know this is their window this is this is their opportunity to win the championship and their window is closing as you heard me say in several videos because it's true because when you look at there's no more big three of the nets it seems like every team is like evenly distributed now every team's got two good players or less and or two great players i should say and less um it's no real big three. You could say the Lakers, but like I said, they just really haven't lived up to expectations. So you can't really say that. And the way Russell is playing for the Lakers, he doesn't even look like a superstar with them. He looks like a, a role player with them. He doesn't even look like the Russell Westbrook that we're accustomed to seeing. So, you know, you have to look at that in its entirety as well and definitely knock them off the board when it comes to that. But there really isn't no big three that really that, that can scare you. Now, of course, you could say you know uh the warriors with draymond clay and steph but they're just really not the same to me at least they don't look like it anyway i mean clay thompson really hasn't looked like himself as of yet i mean i'm still going to give him time simply because he's been out for two years and you just don't come back in the nba after two years seem like or two seasons almost and just come back and dominate the way you were it just doesn't work that way the game goes faster and the game moves on without you and you have to find your footing in your 
your place back into the league or otherwise it'll pass you by. And that's just the way it goes. And, you know, Draymond Green with the back injuries definitely doesn't help. And on top of that, he really isn't a scorer. So, I mean, it's really hard to say they have a big three. They got like a two and a half. If you ask me, even though Draymond is the heart and soul of their team and he plays, you know, crazy defense, things like that, and he could pass really good, but he's just not a scorer. So, you know, you can't say they have a big three, you know, so um, if you look at it from that perspective, like I said, the window is wide open for the Clippers. This is the reason why I said health is very important. And that's something that the Clippers need to, you know, get adapt in their future. They definitely need health on their side because this year it's even more wide open than it was even last year. Because like I said, a lot of people had the Nets, you know, last year winning it all. But health was a part of their reason why they might not, why they didn't go further in the playoffs. You know, because Kyrie got hurt and James Harden had a hamstring. But now, if you look at it, like, you know, um, to me, every team is like a evenly distributed with two superstars or less or two star players or less seem like. And, you know, it's more even. It's more, you know, what I'm saying uh, fair, I would say, you know, what I'm saying. So with that being said, you know, the Clippers definitely have an opportunity because, like I said, I think they got the best duo in the NBA when it comes to playing both sides of the floor, because you got two wing perimeter defenders, two of the best, um, the best two way player in basketball is Kawhi. And like I said, PG isn't far behind. And on top of that, like I said, when you look at the Clippers as a whole, as a team, you know, the way they the way they have won this season without their superstars, you only imagine what they could do with the, with the two superstars as good as the Luke Kennards and, you know, uh, players like that are playing right now, along with other players on the team and just trying to really, you know, gel and get themselves in the position to play their best basketball. And Ty Lue definitely could be in the uh, coach of the year. Uh, conversation of course he probably wouldn't win it because you know the Clippers record isn't the best but I mean it's a lot better than what most people would have thought it would have been at this point because without Kawhi and PG you would think they wouldn't even possibly make the play-in tournament but you know um, they're definitely there they definitely have you know, um, at least got a spot, I believe, in the playing tournament. If they, you know, especially winning maybe one or two, a couple more games out of these last 10 games, they'll definitely solidify a spot there, of course, even more so. But um, they've been impressive throughout this whole season, more so than anything, because, like I said, without their two star players, they've been very, very, you know, consistent in regards to playing hard and pushing themselves to win. And that's been, uh, it's been an impressive run for them, you know, and, you know, impressive by what Coach has been able to do or you know press the right buttons on the players that he do have to get the best out of him it's been very impressive so uh like i said you know when you think about that in its entirety about no super teams really being in the way you know this is the clippers opportunity to win the championship more than it was last year you know because um now that you look at most teams who would you say really it, really would challenge the Clippers, you know, and be a better duo than Kawhi and PG. There really isn't nobody in the West that could, um, you know, you could say possibly, you know, uh, Jamal Murray and Jokic, because I mean, simply because, you know, you know, Denver, you know, it is a pretty solid team too, especially when they got all their, their, their pieces, you know, when they, when they get healthy, they're going to be really good too. So, I mean, you could say them, I will say that, but uh, I just believe that when Kawhi and PG are playing good together. I, I don't. I don't see. I don't see the Denver Nuggets beating them, even with Jamal Murray. The reason why the Denver Nuggets beat them a couple seasons ago in the bubble, because you know Paul George didn't play good at all. You know um, he really didn't. You know, he had one or two good games in that series. Kawhi played good for five or six games in that series. He just didn't play good in that game seven. He had one bad game. So I mean, you can you know, you can you know mix that up as much as you want to, but that's pretty much you know the the only way to look at it you know so I personally think that you know they're better than Clay and Steph as well I personally think that Chris Paul and uh, Devin Booker I think they're a better duo than those two um, I definitely think uh, well I think they can just beat the Lakers anyway I think that, I just believe they can um, simply because you know they just had the Lakers number and anything can happen don't get me wrong but at this point they're definitely a better duo I'd say than 
probably Kawhi. I mean, excuse me, probably LeBron James and Anthony Davis as well, because Anthony Davis can't stay healthy for one. So you don't know whether he would even make a seven game series if they had to play him. Um, and, and LeBron is going to run out of gas at some point. So, at you know, at this point here, I would say Kawhi and PG definitely are the best duo in the NBA to me because I'll take them over um, Harden and uh, Embiid as well because Harden never shows up in big playoff games. He's been notoriously known not to show up in big playoff games. Um, and Embiid is definitely improving a lot, you know, but at the same time, he still has you know, some weaknesses in this game that I think in the playoffs might get exploited, maybe. Um, even though he is a monster, I'm not going to lie. He's he's definitely, he's playing on a, on a really, really, uh, you know, MVP type level right now. So you can't say much about him at all. But at the same time, you know, you got to try to win in the playoffs. I'm not sure if their their duo is good enough, especially with James Harden. Um, and then, you know, you look at KD and then you look at Kyrie. Um, both of those two are great scorers, but not really known for defense. Kyrie definitely can't defend anybody. And KD plays a little bit of defense. But I mean, you know, at the same time, he's not like known as a really great defender. He's not a Kawhi Leonard type defender or I'm not even sure he's a Paul George type defender. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even sure he's looked at in that stature, but because Paul George is a really good defender, too. So this is what I'm saying. When it comes down to defense and offense, Kawhi and PG got that. They got both areas covered up. So and then the team that's backing them with a bunch of guys who know how to play basketball and play together and and be resilient and 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 have that fighter's mentality that's the thing the guys back in Kawhi Leonard and PG definitely gives them the advantage over every team in the NBA so really the death I would say of the super team so far this season or now that you know the Nets are not together and everything the Clippers should be the team that benefits the most because if they're healthy they should be the best team in the league or the most scariest team dangerous team in the league if anything so I mean to me they would benefit the most from there not being a big three but um um, I personally think even if they made the finals last year and if the Nets made the finals last year, I still think the Clippers possibly could have won just because the Clippers got Kawhi Leonard and that defense, defense always wins championships. It, it always does. So, you know, offense sells tickets. That's always been the notion, you know, and the Nets, they got plenty of offense, but, you know, the Clippers got both defense and offense. So, you know, when you look at that, it's the Clippers time. It really is. And uh, the Clippers definitely need to try to get healthy and definitely need to try to make a push for it because now is the time and it's wide open now more so than ever without the super teams and you know you got an even better chance of winning now so you got to strike wise hot you know what I'm saying because next year is no guarantee you know it could be another injury next year or it could be a uh, you know a couple of players missing from the lineup that really are key players you know what I'm saying so it's like you got to try to go for it now if you can so that's why I said if Kawhi and PG can get healthy enough to play put them out there let them go out there and make a run because next year and the year after that is no guarantee and then the year after that i mean hey you know players can opt out of contracts you know Kawhi be able to opt out of his possibly paul george you know what i'm saying like you, a lot can go on so you know if you have an opportunity to win it now go for it now and don't look back but hey that's my take on everything you leave any comments in the comment section as always and hey galley out